I cannot believe the Dad's Making a Difference podcast is one year old today. Today. One year ago, over 60 recorded episodes ago, I set out on a journey with a mission to inspire fathers all over the world to become difference makers. Difference makers in their families by building strong and passionate relationships in healthy homes. To become difference makers in their work and in their businesses by leading hard conversations, sharing their vision, and inspiring others to success. And to become difference makers in their community by connecting men and their kids to opportunities to play and serve right where they live. I want you to become a man driven to live a life of significance, a life of impact and influence, a life where you will build and leave a legacy. Today on this one year birthday episode of the Dad's Making a Difference podcast, I want to share with you the top 10 takeaways that I've taken over this last year of episodes, over 51 interviews that I have had the pleasure of being part of. I'm going to give you the key takeaways of those episodes and share with you what I believe will transform your life, your health, your marriage, your kids, your relationships with your kids, your relationships with others, and your business right now. I also want to pull back the curtain and I want to share with you what our guests have struggled with and how they've overcome. And I'll share with you what I've struggled with and how I hope my story and the story of our guests will challenge you and inspire you to become a dad making a difference. This birthday episode of the DMD podcast starts right now. Well, here we are, my friend, one year into the Dads Making a Difference podcast. And I want to thank you for being here with me. I thank you for being here along the way, 61 episodes in, and we're still going strong, and it's because of you. So thank you. I appreciate you. And if you are listening to the Dads Making a Difference podcast for the first time, if or if you're returning, I want to encourage you to subscribe so you hear the powerful episodes that come out week after week after week. So here we are. We're one year in, and I thought about what I was going to talk about today. And I thought about this over the last week. You see, last week, I went on a solo trip, a solo trip out to the mountains. And I want to tell you a little bit of story about how this happened. About two weeks ago, I was walking in the evening, walking my dog with my wife, Kim. And I was taking the advice of one of our guests who's come on the show multiple times, Tony DiLorenzo. And Kim and I were doing uh, some physical intimacy with each other, meaning non-sexual intimacy, but we're out doing something physical together where we can connect. And so we were out walking the dog. This is a practice that we've put in into our weeks. And on that walk, I was sharing with Kim what I was working through and what I was struggling with and how just the push of getting the DMD mastermind rolling and launch. Oh, I was working on the launching a new coaching program within the DMD for guys. And I'm so excited for you to hear about that as it comes out, but I was sharing things with Kim and she could tell that I was feeling a bit not burnt out, but I was getting a bit tired and that my creativity was starting to fall behind. And there's times in our lives, guys, where we feel that We just don't have the push. We just don't have the energy. And I knew this episode was coming up and I I was talking to her about like, what what am I going to talk about? Like there's so many powerful things and amazing things that have happened over the last year. And she challenged me. She said, well, what are your biggest takeaways? And I'll be honest, guys, like I didn't know in that moment. Well, later in that conversation, Kim encouraged me. She said, you know what? You recharge on your own. And you do the best recharging when you're in the mountains. So she said, why don't you take your truck, throw the tent in the back and your bike on the back and just go because we just had a long weekend. And and she said, just go, go for the weekend and and be by yourself and re like disconnect to reconnect. We were just coming off uh, an amazing trip, Kim and I to Nashville, where I was uh, part of a mastermind event there where we celebrated Kim's 40th birthday while we were there. And coming out of that, I had so much energy and so much push. 
And that lasted for about two weeks. And then I was just like, oh man, I'm exhausted. So I welcomed the opportunity to go. And I did. I threw my tent and my bike on my truck and I took off to the mountains, not knowing where I was going. So I reached out to a friend and I said, hey, I might be rolling through your community on the weekend. Are you available for a coffee? He said, well, do you want to climb a mountain with me? Oh, yes, I do. I replied. So on that Saturday morning uh, last week, I had an opportunity to hike up what's called the East End of Rundle Mountain in Canmore, Alberta, one of my favorite places. And Canmore, if you don't know, is going to be the site of the in-person DMD Summit. And we will be climbing mountains together, by the way, guys, if you're part of the DMD Mastermind uh, at the DMD Summit. And so we are in Canmore. I'm meeting my friend. We're climbing this mountain. And it had me remember the power of doing hard things. The power of doing hard things. Now, I think about the last year and what you have been through, what our guests have been through, what I've been through personally, my family's been through. And I'm sure that we all have faced hard things. But not often do we see hard things and take advantage of the opportunity to do them. I was happy that I was climbing that mountain that day because it was a symbol to me that even though things get tough, things are hard and I might be tired, I can still do it. Well, that day we climbed that mountain. Uh, if you haven't seen images and pictures, I shared some on our social media, just incredible footage that my friend took while we were up there. And I went back to the campsite that night and I sat there outside my tent and just thought about how powerful it was to be connected to the land in that moment to be recharging in nature, to be uh, in the quiet at the peak of a mountain, which is if you haven't been up there when the wind's not moving at the top of a mountain, it's almost chilling to say how, how quiet and still it can be in such a rugged and aggressive environment. And I, I went to bed that night thankful. And I woke up the next morning hopeful because when we do hard things and we come out the other side, we have hope, hope that we can take on other challenges. And so that Sunday, the day after we climbed the mountain, I thought to myself, I'm going to do a little ride, a little mountain bike ride that I love to do. And I thought back to a ride that I did when I was a teenager in the same area. And I wanted to do that ride again. I mapped it out and it should be about, you know, 30 kilometers uh, from my American friends, probably about 20 miles. And so I, I set out on this bike ride and I climbed up to the the valley, which was like an hour climb. I rode from Canmore to Banff, Alberta on the backside of Rundle Mountain through a, it's like a double wide mountain bike trail. It's not too aggressive. It's, I, I would think it's like a zone one, zone two ride, except I just like to go like crazy. So I'm just ripping and having a blast. I get into the Banff town sites and I'm riding around seeing the sites and people are everywhere and there's this, this energy, but I'm starting to feel it. I'm starting to feel the fatigue. I'm starting to feel the fatigue in my legs as I started to ride back to Canmore. And if you were following my stories, you know that I kind of bailed out on that, that ride back. I had two options. I could take the mountain bike trail back, which I knew was going to be tough. Or I could take a paved trail. It's called the Legacy Trail that runs parallel to the highway and runs the 20 kilometers back to Canmore. I opted for the paved trail. And here's why. Because I knew I was tired. I knew my legs were exhausted. And I knew that I would have enough to get back if I went that way. But if I went the other way, I'd put myself at risk. Sometimes doing hard things means doing hard things the easy way, if that makes sense. So doing hard things in the way that's safe. In the way that you know that there is a possibility for you to find success. If we go into hard things knowing we're exhausted and we're tired and in that moment, my man, my legs and the muscles in my legs hurt so bad, I knew I wasn't going to make it if I went on the, on the mountain. And so I did that ride. I rode back and there was times I needed breaks. And by the time I got back to my truck and I threw that bike on the truck and I was curious and I looked down at my tracker and I looked back at the, this app that I used to track my rides and I was like, oh my goodness, I thought it was going to be 30 kilometers. It ended up being 55 kilometers, about 34 miles. I was exhausted. But in that moment, I couldn't believe that I'd been able to push through when my body was so tired after climbing a mountain the night before, the day before. 
And I was proud of myself. And so I, I went down and I, I sat at a patio. Actually, I went and showered first because it was gross. Um, but I went and sat on a patio and I sit by myself on uh, that patio to get some food. And I want to tell you this story. I'm not telling you this story so that you can be like, oh, wow, Cam did all these amazing things. Like, I want to tell you these stories because I think we all recharge in different ways. And when I was reflecting on what I wanted to talk about today and the top 10 takeaways, it all parallels what I, my journey on this weekend alone. And so as I sat there on the patio and I got myself a burger, a good, awesome burger at this great burger place, and I sat outside and I just watched people. And I paid my tab while I asked the, the waitress for my tab and she was going to come back and something happened, something that uh, was unexpected, something that was uncomfortable for me uh, as a guy who likes to recharge on my own and have my plan and stick to it. Uh, just as I was about to stand up from the table, an elderly gentleman walked up and this patio was really busy and he gestured to the empty seat. And he said, excuse me, are, are you sitting by yourself? And I thought he was going to use the seat. He was going to take it somewhere else. I said, well, yes, I am. Uh, but I was just about to leave. He said, well, do you mind if I join you? And I looked at him and I'm going to be honest, guys, like in my head, I was like, oh man, are you kidding me right now? But I sat and I said, sure. Why, why don't you take a seat? Because one, I, I don't want to be a jerk. And, uh, and two, it takes a lot for someone to approach a stranger, say, hey, are you sitting by yourself? And can I take a seat? And so I was curious by that. And I think curiosity is part of the keys to success. But this man sits down and he proceeds to share a lot about his life with me in the first like five minutes. And the waitress comes back and she sees me there. And I think she was trying to rescue me. She was asking me questions if I wanted another uh, beverage, if I wanted something else to eat, or if I was good or anything else. Like she's trying to give me an out. And in that moment, I had a decision to make. I could walk away and leave this man who's taken a chance sitting at the table by himself, or I could sit and I can listen, and I could connect. And in that moment, I chose to connect. And so I sat and I listened to Eric tell his story and what a fascinating story it was. Eric had traveled all over the world. Now to paint the picture, Eric is, I would say Eric is in his mid to late sixties and he sat down and, and he started to tell me about his life, his life story, about traveling, about his kids, about a marriage that fell apart and how his second marriage has been joyful and healthy but was starting to enter in a period that he felt uneasy about. And I sat there and I listened to Eric as he spoke. And then I started to see something in him. I started to see a curiosity in his eyes as he looked at me and started to ask me questions. And before you knew it, he and I were going back and forth with these conversations and answering each other's questions. And there was a moment in that conversation, I realized that this wasn't an accident, that Eric didn't just happen to be walking by and see me and see me that I looked relaxed. So he decided to ask to sit. There was a greater purpose here because Eric began to tell me of his background. He told me he had two kids, as I do. Uh, he told me about the age spread of his children who are now grown adults, but they were two years apart like mine are. Eric shared how he used to be a high school principal and work in education, as I do, and how at one point in his life, he made a decision to start a men's group and help dads in his community. And in that moment, I got chill. I got goosebumps right now because Eric knew nothing about me. And guys, if you know nothing about me, you're listening to this for the first time. I'm a vice principal of a high school. I have two kids and I have the Dads Making Difference podcast and the dad's making of its mastermind and created fight the dad bought in 2015. And we had so many parallels. And I looked at this man, I was like, is this going to be me? And what about Eric's story? Can I learn from? Well, anyway, at the end of that conversation, Eric said, Cam, I found this extremely valuable. And I looked back to said, Eric, you have no idea how valuable this conversation was to me. Thank you. Thank you for asking me uh, to sit. Thank you for sharing your life story with me and inspiring me to be a dad who's going to make a difference. So I walked away from that conversation and I realized something. 
the power of connection. And it got me thinking about this episode right now. It got me thinking about the last year of the Dad's Making a Difference podcast. It got me thinking about the power of connection and the power of conversation. And so that, my friend, is what I want to share with you today. Because I've had powerful connections and conversations over the last year that I had no idea were a possibility. When you would have come to me in April and May of 2022 and said, Cam, a year from now, you are going to have interviewed over 50 amazing individuals who are authors and speakers and podcasters and professionals and world-renowned experts in their field. I would have said, you're crazy. You're crazy. But what this podcast has done is opened up doors and opened up windows into my life, into the life of our guests, so that I hope it inspires you to see yourself in someone else's story. So I want to talk about the story. And I, I shared my last weekend with you because it's a story. And I think we have an opportunity to connect each other through the power of story. And so today is all about the power of connection, the power of communication and conversation and the power of story. So I want to share my 10 top takeaways from year one of the Dads Making a Difference podcast. Now, what I did not want to do is just summarize the 51 interviews and 61 episodes. What I wanted to do was do some deep thought and give you 10 actionable steps that you can take right now to become a dad making a difference. And I wouldn't have come up with these if it wasn't for Eric. And so I thought, sat down and I prayed and I thought, thank God that I had that interaction because I don't think it was an accident. All right, here we go. Get your pen, get your notes, get something ready. You're going to probably listen to this list a couple of times and I hope you do. And if you find that these top 10 takeaways speak to you and they're valuable, I hope that at some point after you listen to this episode, you share this episode with someone you know who this is going to help. And that you leave a review, give us five stars, of course, and subscribe and all that fun stuff. But share this with someone who needs to hear it. Okay, you ready? Here we go. Number one, uh, I should, oh, actually, I should preface that. These top 10 takeaways, I, I thought about the 51 conversations I had with other people in those 61 episodes. I think these are running themes through all those people. And this is what I've learned. So number one, presence is power. Presence is power. Your presence, both physically and emotionally, is a powerful tool. Embrace the beauty of the here and now. This not only strengthens your relationships, but also your, helps you savor life's moments and get the most out of your life, the most out of your interactions, the most out of your connections, and the most out of your conversations. People want your presence, not your presence. They want you there. They want you in the moment and they want you where you, your feet are. I just had a great conversation with the last guest. You're going to hear this episode coming up uh, in the next few weeks. He said, be where your feet are. Be present. So my first takeaway from 20, 22, 23, I guess the last year, is presence is power. Number two, cultivate patience. Embrace patience as a path to personal growth. It's an art that helps you maintain your calm, even in the face of parenting challenges, marital instability, business uncertainty, or where you're lost. Your patience makes you a beacon of stability in your child's life, in the life and relationship that you have with your partner, and gives you stability and a uh, creates a beacon of hope for those around you in your community and in your business. So cultivate patience. My third biggest takeaway the last year is that active listening is learning. It has been such a blessing to be on this side of the microphone and be able to ask questions of the people who've come on and listen. And selfishly, I've learned so much. And I hope you're listening to this and you've learned so much from our guests and you have major takeaways and you've dove into their work and into their books and into what they do. But on this side of the mic, I've realized that active listening is learning. And so how does that translate into being a dad making a difference? Well, by actively listening to your child, 
by actively listening to your wife, you're not only making them feel valued, but you're also learning about a unique worldview. Your child, your significant other have a unique worldview. This can broaden your own perspectives and enhance your empathetic skills. And empathy builds connection and it builds relationships. So active listening is learning. My fourth takeaway is be a role model. Now we think of being a role model as only being a role model to our kids, but that's not necessarily true. Eric in that conversation in Camor was a role model to me. And you need to find a role model because in striving to model good behavior, ethics and values to your children and those around you, you naturally become a better person. Every day is an opportunity for self-improvement. Every day. We are committed to growth here. On this podcast, I've talked about three things. Know, know your why, aim for growth, and take ownership. A mantra that I learned in one of the schools that I've worked in. And I love it. I've taken it to heart. But I know that being a go good role model is part of that opportunity for self-improvement and self-growth. Takeaway number five. Open communication an open mind. Foster an environment of open communication with your child, with your spouse, with the people you are close with. This not only builds trust, but encourages you to keep an open mind and an open heart. Vital traits for someone who's committed to personal growth. Vital traits for a dad who wants to make a difference. Number six, emotional intelligence is strength. Recognize and manage your emotions. So many stories that we've had over the last year have centered on emotion. When emotion has gotten the better of us, uh, when emotion has challenged us, when it has hurt us, when it has excited us. But recognizing and managing your emotions helps you better understand the emotions of those around you, of your children, of your spouse. This is a vital component of personal growth and can enhance your relationships and your overall emotional well-being. I am committed to helping you be healthy, physically and mentally, mentally and emotionally. And so if you have emotional intelligence as strength, you will be healthier in the long run. And you can't be a dad making a difference without being healthy, taking care of yourself physically, mentally and emotionally. Number seven, takeaway of the last year, embrace adaptability. Flexibility is the core principle in personal development. Be ready to adapt your parenting style, your style as a husband or partner to the needs of your children for your parenting style and your relationship style with your partner. It's wonderful to practice adaptability in other areas of our lives as well. Because we will have connections and communications with people in all types of contexts, in all types of situations. But if you embrace adaptability and you work to make yourself uncomfortable so that you can respond in the situation that put, in a way that puts empathy first, puts other people first, you will build connection. And by building connection, you'll make a difference. So embrace adaptability. Number eight, self-care fuels success. I only need to think back a week on that trip to Canmore that I was camping and gone by myself with the encouragement of my wife. That was self-care. And out of that self-care, I did hard things. I pushed myself. I recovered. I felt pain, like physical pain. I felt emotional pain when I was in solitude. But I also came out of that with hope and excitement and a vision for where I'm heading next. And self-care can fuel your success. Taking care of your physical health and your mental health is crucial for personal success. When you're at your best, you can give your best to your children. When you are at your best, you can give yourself to your wife. When you are at your best, you can give the best of yourself to others. So remember, you can't pour from an empty cup. Self-care will fuel your success. Next is invest in shared interests. Invest in shared interests. How often do you find yourself being like, man, I don't have friends. 
so many men don't have friends. They have connections, people they work with, maybe some buddies back from college they're still connected with. But how many of us have close, intentional, caring, loving friendships? I know I can count on one hand the people that I'm close to, other men who I'm that close to. Guys, this needs to change. And to change that, you need to invest in shared interest. This is why I'm so passionate about mastermind groups. I've been part of mastermind groups for years. That is why I'm starting and started the DMD mastermind group for men just like you. So we can get men together who have shared interests who are going to challenge each other. Now, we can do that with other men, but we can also invest in shared interests with our kids to become a dad making a difference. Engaging in activities with your kids that they like helps build your relationship. It can help you explore new passions and skills and foster your own growth while deepening your bond with your children. So invest in shared interests. Number 10, I'm going to go 11 because I'm just on a roll now. So number 10, teach and learn life skills. If you've been listening to the Dad's Making Difference podcast over the last 60 episodes, this has been an ongoing theme. And there's been lots of complex conversations. There have been hard conversations, conversations of loss, conversations where people have lost parents in tragic situations, where people have attempted to take their own life through an incredibly hurtful story. There's been stories of, of sickness. There's been stories of pain and discomfort. And out of every one of those stories, what have we seen? We have seen someone commit to learning something new. We've seen someone commit to adapting to change, but also we've seen people commit to learning new life skills to push themselves forward. And you can do this in your own life. You can do this with your children. You can do this with your wife. And teaching your own children practical life skills, you will also likely learn or relearn these skills. This is a win-win. It's a win-win for you and your child. And it makes you both more prepared for life's challenges. In the DMD Mastermind, we teach and learn life skills. Real life skills. Guys, we navigate similar things every day. You are not alone. And doing this together means that both you and I are going to be more prepared for life's challenges. Such a valuable experience. And so here, I'm going to give you one bonus. One bonus that's going to, like, it's an overarching theme here. And it's come, come across over and over and over in my conversations this year. Is that isolation is the enemy of excellence. You cannot succeed in isolation. A lone wolf never survives. You need a pack. You need a band of brothers to surround yourself with. You need a trusted group of advisors that you can get accountability from, that you can have unfiltered conversations from. You can need these men around you, the men in the dad's making a difference mastermind. You need them around you to support you, to guide you, to challenge you, to celebrate you and help you become the man that you are meant to be. A man who wants to live a life of significance. A man driven to make impact and influence. And a man who wants to leave a legacy. Truly, you are going to become a dad making a difference. So don't operate in isolation. Because remember, guys, being a dad is one of the most rewarding journeys you can ever embark on. It offers abundant opportunities for self-growth and discovery. So embrace this journey with open arms and an open heart. You are capable, you are important, and you are making a difference. I want to thank you, my friend, for being here with me along this ride. I look forward to another year of fantastic conversations. I look for, forward to another year of amazing connections and opportunities. And I want you to join us in those. So subscribe to this podcast so you don't miss an upcoming episode. Share this podcast with someone who needs to hear it so that they're not operating in isolation. And reach out and go to dmdmastermind.com 
and learn about how you can join our brotherhood. You can join, join a community of men who have similar interests, who are pushing each other to grow, who are pushing each other forward, who are pushing each other to be a dad, making a difference. Thank you, my friend. And we will see you next week on the first episode of year two of the Dads Making a Difference podcast. Thank you.